Welcome to Money Hacks, where we offer tips for the newcomer to the financial investment scene. Hello, I'm Ernest Lewis and my co-host is Chris Lim, Digital Editor of The Business Times. With us is Mr. David Gerald, Founder, President and CEO of Securities Investors Association Singapore. SIAS, as it's known for short, champions investor rights promotes corporate governance and educates investors at all levels to make them smart investors. Since 1999, 162,000 Singaporeans have been educated by SIAS in investments through 1,225 programs. Hi, David. Yes, hello. How has uh, public awareness changed in Singapore since 1999? Well, tremendously. In 1999, I had a very strong feel of the knowledge level of people, then attending the Klopp Saga town hall meetings. They didn't have a clue about investments, including myself. Uh, So I went north, south, east, west of Singapore, and when I spoke to citizens who were involved in that, uh, you know, debacle, uh, I came to the firm conclusion, SIAS will have to continue beyond that club fight to educate Singaporeans to learn how to do financial planning firstly and secondly how to grow their money through investing so uh, we needed to rally around us experts in financial planning experts in investments uh, and bring them together to impart knowledge and expertise to citizens you know and, and citizens came in by big numbers i mean there was an incident where 1,500 turned up for, uh, you know, just 800 seats. Why? They suddenly found they got something tangible, something very useful for them to apply in their financial planning and investment journey towards a happier retirement. So because people want to make money quickly. So young people are in a hurry today. So we have so far done about you know 1225 programs and covered 162000 citizens we are nowhere uh, where we want to be all right okay. we have a long journey and this is going to be an arduous process you know getting people to understand that they must invest with knowledge right without knowledge is a gamble all right but the temptation to get into the stock market mm-hmm. without knowledge is really, really great because people want to get money quickly. So the, the, the message is sinking in slowly. I think our, our um, uh, leaders have done a good job by educating on how CPF money should be used. And secondly, that education is important. So that is together with you know, NGOs like us, you know, charities, uh, reaching out to many, many people. Last year, we did 97 investor education programs alone. You know, my staff okay. hardly rested. <laughs> <laughs> but we do this because uh, many of them are not really building a portfolio for long term. All right? Or putting all their money in one basket, in one, all their eggs in one basket. All right? So slowly, we are finding uh, when we started. Uh, people above 50, above 45, 50 came in droves. Today, I'm happy to say we've got a lot of young people. We have a youth chapter, SIAS youth chapter, where young people in schools, uh, universities join us. And most of the investment clubs in the universities work with us. And we have been concentrating for the last seven, eight years on young people. And now it's paying dividends. For the investment week this year, uh, that's a week that we concentrate on providing meaningful investor education programs for citizens. It's free, all right? Okay. Sponsored by various organizations, but it is free. And we found for the first time, already before registration has been announced, before the program has been announced mm-hmm. to the public at large, 200 young investors have already registered. And, and there's an event coming up on the 19th of May at the HDB Hub auditorium yes. that's the next event after yes. this episode is out yes um david say i'm a young adult yes and i just got my first job this year at the age of 25 you've already explained about investment week and yes. theme of investment week yes. but that's interesting um 
are there are these investment clubs uh, at the university? Say I'm even younger at the age of eighteen or something, sure. seventeen. What are these investment clubs that I can get started out besides attending yeah. some of the well, CS well, events? If you're not in the universities, you're not. Therefore, you can't be in the investment clubs there, but you can be in the CS uh, youth chapter. Okay. All right. This this for the, this youth chapter is for polytechnic students, for university students, and as you said, for school leavers and those who are in junior colleges. Uh, you know, A levels or O levels, they can join. Uh, it's never too early to learn, and and it's younger they start, the better. Any investing investor class that you join uh, today mm-hmm. is about how to prepare for a better retirement. Okay. All right. You cannot keep your money in the bank and hope that you will retire well because your money doesn't grow. Unfortunately, inflation wipes out the interest uh, earnings. It's so meager. So you need to invest and you must invest. If not, it will be a sorry state of affairs for you. So we tell the young people, start early, even before marriage. Once you have a wife and children, you have burdens. You have liabilities. Okay. Interesting you can say that, David. Yeah. Say I'm different from yes. Ernest's character. I'm yeah. a young working adult, married with two kids, and I'm in my mid-30s. Mm. Sias has this next event on, the May, on May 25th called Financial Literacy and Family Budgeting at the STI Auditorium. Yes. How can something something like that help someone like me? I'm not quite as impatient as someone in my 20s, but sure. I feel the pressure yes. to provide for my family. Yes. Many young people do not embark on systematic saving. That's the first point. Many young people, uh, we also found out, rarely do budgeting. They get into debts. They carry credit cards and they spend and they do not limit and put a cap on their spending uh, you know ability so we got to look at their ability to earn and their propensity to uh, to to uh, you know uh, to spend money on expenses so if they do not do budgeting they will not have the realization that they are actually spending too much so we are going to make bring an awareness the need to budget the need to invest carefully long term and and get the right principles imbibed with the right principles of investing value investing long term stay put do not be in a hurry don't be greedy do not worry about jack or jane john go on your own on very strong principles you mentioned you have to invest you can't just mm. put your money in in the bank and just hope for the best but you need to be educated, so you sure. said that you can't go in blind. Yes. But uh, that education process takes time, takes yes. commitment. How do you balance that need to quickly start, as you mentioned, start as early as you can yes. versus spending the time to understand the market? Yeah, it takes time to learn and understand, but not very long. But you, there must be the willingness to search for what I want and get what I want. And we put out on our website all the programs for different age groups. Mm. And we have got an investment chapter, which is like an investment club. And they should register with us and they will be, we will hold their hand. Well, thanks, David, for being on the show. You can find out about uh, SIAS and its work in investor education by going to the website siassias.org.sg. Do check out our other podcasts on various topics on The Straits Times and The Business Times. Thank you, Ernest and Chris. Now to you, our listener, we'd like to invite you to pose your own questions or scenarios to moneyhacks at podcast at sph.com.sg. That brings us to the end of this episode of Money Hacks, where we help you make sense of trends and your finances. Do note that any financial or investment information in this podcast is for use in Singapore only and is intended to be for your general information. Any particular investment or decision should only be made after consulting with a fully qualified financial advisor.